Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here from Creative Frontiers and in this video we're going to look at creating a fur effect inside of Illustrator. If this is your first time visiting and you want to learn best practice techniques to create killer artwork, then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss a thing. So without further ado, I'll dive back into my document. So here I have plain artboard with nothing on there. I'm going to start completely from scratch. So I'm going to start off by creating my circles in here. I'm going to pick up the ellipse tool and then click and hold down the mouse with a shift key held down to get a perfect circle and create one that is about 110 pixels in size. Switch to my selection tool and then go back to the window menu at the top up here because I need to open up my swatches panel. I have prepared some colors and then go to window and choose gradient to open up the gradient panel. So I have these two on screen here. If I just hold down the space bar to pan, then I have my circle active inside of here and I need to create two gradients. I'm going to start with um, a blue gradient. So going from a dark blue to a light blue and then a dark green to a light green in there. So first off, I don't need a stroke applied to this and that will definitely be not what we want for this effect. So um, with that active at the front in, this, in the uh, gradient panel, I can go to the uh, bottom of the tools panel. I can click on none in there or you can tap the forward slash key on the keyboard. That will remove the stroke. And then if I left click on the fill appearance in there, now it's targeted and I can then left click and add a default kind of Adobe gradient in there, which goes from white to black on the right hand side. So with that done, now I need to change the colors. Now I experimented with these colors to get kind of a, a nice darker version on one hand and then get kind of a lighter, almost not neon, but a nice pingy vibrant lighter version of the blue and the green in there. And that will really help because to accentuate this fur effect, we're going to have to start off with a darker color that blends to light in there. So um, to replace my rather dull looking black to white gradient, I'm going to hover my cursor, first of all, on the um, lighter swatch in here and then click and hold down the mouse and drag that all the way down to the bottom and drop that onto the white color stop in there to replace it. I'll then go to the dark blue and click and drag and drop that onto what is black at the moment to replace that. And then I have my effect inside of there. So I go from a light blue to a dark blue. Now, what I really need is I need that to be light blue at the top and dark at the bottom. So I can go to the angle value in here and swipe over that and then type in 90, press return. Um, and uh, that changes that to be dark at the top, but what a lighter at the bottom. So I can actually go to the reverse button in the gradient panel in there and reverse that round. So I have now light at the top and dark at the bottom as intended. Um, then I will create my green version. So having done this now, I can hover my cursor over that, hold down the Alt key, Alt click and drag to create a duplicate. Let go of the mouse, let go of the Alt key. And then um, I will change the properties. So again, click and drag the dark green over onto the blue and to replace that one. And then take the light green and drag and drop that onto what was the lighter blue in there to replace it like so. So that is the basis in here for the appearance. Um, with that done, if you want to save time, you could save those two gradients. It always is kind of helpful, really. So with the green one selected here, I'll go down to the bottom and click on new swatch. Call that uh, green. Press return. Select the blue one and do the same thing. Click on new swatch and call that. Yep, you've guessed it, blue. Really imaginative, I know. But in if I do need to go back and start all over again, then I, that will save a little bit of time in there. So with that done now, what I need to do to create this kind of fur effect, I need to blend the blue circle to the green circle in there. And to do that, I'll have to, of course, select them both and then use the blend technique inside of Illustrator. So that'll be up in the object menu, go down the list to blend, and then you click on make and that will create a blend between them. Now, sometimes Illustrator will remember what you did last in there. Sometimes it will use the default options, but Unfortunately, you're going to have to go into this menu twice, once to apply the blend and then the second time to click on blend options to define what that looks like. So I'll click on make and that will apply the blend. Now, in this case, it's created one virtual version, which is a mixture between the blue and the green. So whether it's a shape or a color, Illustrator, if you have two or more objects, you blend between them, it will blend the appearance of the shape from the start object to the finished object, and it will also blend the colors as well. So that's what it does. And notice it, it puts this line down here. That's the direction of how it will work. So from there, now I can go back to the object menu, back to blend, and then choose in the blend options. 
and in here it tells me that I have smooth color. Um, well, not quite, but if I click on the drop down menu, you can actually change that to be specified steps. So if you want to change the number of virtual versions between the original start point and the original finish point, then you can just type them in here. So if I type in something like uh, 200 and then click on the tick for the preview in there, now we get something that looks smoother. So we transition from the blue to the green in there. And uh, with that done, I'm fairly happy. Um, there is a, an option there for orientation. I will talk a little bit more about that later on, but for now I'll click OK. And we have our object. So let's try this on something a little bit more complicated. So if I again pick up my um, ellipse tool and then start in the middle of the artboard in there, I'm using Smart Guide so I can actually go straight to the center of the artboard in there with the tooltip and click and hold down the mouse. Drag out with the shift key held down and the alt key this time. So it allows you to create a circle from its center point and then let go of the mouse and let go of the keys on the keyboard. Now it will remember the last thing that I applied in here. I actually selected obviously the blue uh, gradient in there to save it, so that's what it's remembered. Uh, from here then, all that I'll do is I'm gonna keep that object selected. I'm gonna press the D key on the keyboard to reset the colors of that. And then I'm gonna hover over and shift and left click on the original blended objects. So now with them both selected, my new ellipse and my blended shape, I can go back to object, go down the list to blend, and in the lower half of that um, list of sub options in there, there is something called replace spine. So the spine, as you can see on the original uh, shapes at the moment, is that vertical line that creates a link between the start object and the finish one. But you can put your blend onto something else. So if I click on replace spine, it just moves that blend onto the circle. And the original object is, is not there anymore. It's gone. It's moved onto the circle. Now, this is quite typical of what will happen as well with a blend. It doesn't always blend all the way around a circle. So easy way to remedy that is um, if I pick up my pen tool from the tools panel there, tap the, the P key in the keyboard, you can always hover over and say left, hover your cursor over there. So my pen tool now will read a plus next to it in there. That will add an extra anchor point. Um, that doesn't work that time. So I'll just go back a step, try going up to the top and then left click and there you go. Sometimes Illustrator just needs that nudge. So because this obviously is an enclosed circle, a ring, um, we start with a green object here um, up at the top and then it spins around counterclockwise in there and goes behind when it transitions to blue in there. So again, you can see that we have in there all the blend steps. You can just see now because this circle's bigger that we have a slight banding in there because those 200 steps that we had on that very small version were lovely and smooth because this blend now runs over a, a bigger distance, this much bigger circle on here, the bigger spine, those blended steps will be spaced out even further. So you'll depend on the size of the thing that you apply the blend to as into how many steps you'll need um, to create that looking smooth or the way that you want. So we have this in here now. I'm fairly happy with that. Uh, click on my selection tool. I'll click on the effect menu, go down the list to distort and transform and then choose roughen. So this is the thing that's going to really make it look like fur. This is all down to roughen really. So from here, I'm going to turn on the preview checkbox and then it applies the default roughen amount, which will be a size value in here of 5% and then the detail in there. So at the moment we have very low detail and we have a reasonably small size. You will notice then that if I, for example, reduce the detail and tap down, we will get less detail in there until we get to a very, very simple shape. It almost makes our circle look like a square in there. We've got one level of detail. So it's a mixture of trying to play around with the size and the detail sliders in there. The other thing is the points will have a huge bearing on the end of result as well. So at the moment, the set to corner, if I choose smooth, then that will give us this appearance. So if I swipe over the detail in there and increase that, you will notice that we get more and more detail. And then if I go to the size slider, I can drag that across and we start to get a larger size in there. So this is where this, the fur now starts to take shape and why we had to go with a dark color to a light one because it needs that kind of transition in it. So here set to a size of 25%, I can then just go back to the detail slider and I can just keep tapping up inside of there. To be perfectly honest, as you drag the detail slider more and more towards the right hand side, Illustrator will have to do a lot more work. So do just bear with it because if I drag it over here to say, well, let's go for 50% now in here. Give it a second. 
And now we get a little bit more detail in there. So it's looking good, you know, I'm, and get, we're getting there with the effect, really. Um, you can drag it right to, you can drag it right to the far end, obviously. But if I set this to, say, 85, in terms of increments, this is, it's not percent, the IN there is increments. So I've got 85 increments in there. You get lots of lovely details. So we're really getting the effect that we're looking for inside of there now. And um, I that's pretty much it for now so if i go down to the bottom click ok that is how you can create your kind of basic fur effect inside of there now i do have on the other artboard some more shapes so if i zoom out i did kind of reference a font that i wanted to work with so as you can see here sully uh, taken my inspiration from monsters inc and the colors from sully the character uh, i'm going to apply this blend onto those characters in there. I say the characters, I just uh, drew out a font in a text frame, used the pen tool to kind of trace around the look of that in there. I'll create a duplicate, uh, alt click and drag, move that one up there, click away, select this one, then shift and left click on the Sully, the U-double-L-Y text, and again, go to objects, then go to blend and then choose replace spine, and it will put it on there. And then I'll select the S and then select the copy in there. And then again, go back to object, go down to blend and then choose replace spine to put the blend from that circle onto the S in there. And there we have it. So if I now go and click on the artboard and, and go to the view menu and then choose uh, fit artboarding window, you'll notice that there is a... Uh, well, a subtle difference between the two, because I told the blend to jump onto this object, it is spaced a bit further apart now. So each of the increments, they have to go over a, a, a much longer distance. So I probably need to increase the increments for this, the U double L Y. Notice that the version with the S in here, notice that they look a lot tighter together and a lot smoother. And that's because the blend jumped from the circle onto this path, which is shorter than the U double L Y version in there. So with that done, I think I'm kind of happy at the moment with the S, the, the spacing in there. So I'm going to click on that, the U double L Y one and go to object, then go back to blend and then choose blend options. And in terms of specified steps, I'll swipe over that and type in 300. And then I'm going to hit the tab key on the keyboard and then press the, uh, the, the checkbox for the preview inside of there. Now, it will take a little bit longer because we've got um, lots of increments of the blend for the noise in there for the roughening. Um, and we've now got quite a lot of steps, uh, 300 uh, in there between the original circles. I mean, you can see in the background, that's the original circle for the blue one. And the end of the path in there now is where the green one was inside of there. So same circles, they've just been moved. And um, with that done, to show you the orientation at the moment then, the way that this will run along the path is that it will basically align to the page, which is the artboard as we now know. But if you hover your cursor over and click on align to path, then you will get a different appearance. It will twist and turn with the direction of how the path flows as well. You have to be patient because it takes a little bit of time for Illustrator to update this in here. So that's the kind of effect we get in there. Now, I personally prefer to have the previous option in there. So I'm gonna go back and click on that one. And then be incredibly um, patient with Illustrator because it's trying to do a lot of work in here to go like that. Um, so with that done, uh, I'm happy with that. I'll click OK. And then just to make sure that they do look similar, I might take a little bit of the increments out of the S in there. Once Illustrator's finished um, applying that final effect in there, click on the S. Again, notice that the end circle, the green one is on the S in there. The start blue one is over here. So... Again, it's moving over to the path in there, blend in there, then go down to blend options. And I'm going to set this in here to maybe going down to 100 in there and then hitting the tab key. And I think now we're getting something close to the other one in there. So there's, there's good consistency between those now. I'll click OK. And then Illustrator will then finish doing that final pass in there. And there we have it, folks. We have our Sully furry text uh, style in there. Um, there are a couple of other things you could play around with. If I um, select all of those, um, those two shapes in there, and then go back to the object menu and then go to blend, you can choose to reverse the front to back. So um, if I click on that, what it will do is it will change 
the way that the text looks in here in terms of the twists and turns just give it a chance to update and we get that effect so it depends which you feel is you know, giving you the, the the right appearance in here I personally don't want this effect because if you imagine that you are writing out if you had how crazy would this be? If you had a furry pen that you could write with, imagine you start the U and you work along, then when you go up to the top of the first L and you come back down, it wouldn't go behind the original fluffy pencil mark in there. So that doesn't really work for us in our case. So I'm going to go to the edit menu at the top and choose undo reverse front to back. And I actually want to keep this looking the way it would do if you're going to draw this. So as the pencil mark worked from the U to the top of the L, when you cut back down from the top of the L, it would go in front of the first portion in there like so. So that's that's much better. I do like that. Um, with that done, then, I think the only thing to do then really maybe is to put shadow underneath to finish this off. So again, if I pick up my ellipse tool, I want to create something that's going to have quite a larger one there underneath the S for a softer shadow in there. Uh, I'm going to click on black for the fill. And then I'm going to switch back to my selection tool, hold down the Alt key, Alt click and drag, and then create a smaller circle in there for my U in there, like so. Probably increase the size of the S a little bit. It's probably a little better. And then Alt click and drag that along, hold down the Alt key in there, just to just make that a little touch smaller. And again, create a duplicate as well. Alt click and drag in there. And then Alt click and drag again for the Y and then increase that out in there like so. And I think we're looking something close. I will then click and drag across those circles in there. Go across the properties panel. Click on the Pathfinder option to unite to merge all of them together in there. And then it probably wants to be a little bit lighter than that. So I'm going to go to the window menu and then go down the list to color. And then when the color panel pops up on screen, I will then make that lighter. So I'm going to go for um, HSB in here for hue, saturation and brightness. And then I'll just increase the brightness value in there to make them a little bit brighter. And then um, click away from there. Now I've done that. And then go to the effect menu, go down the list to a Photoshop effect, which is blur and then choose Gaussian blur. Turn on the preview checkbox and then I'll just increase that blur value in there just a touch. Oh no, maybe just reduce it. I think, I think I'm good there at about 15. Um, I'll click OK and then finally I'll go to the opacity in there, swipe over that, say type in 50, press return and then click away and we have kind of a shadow underneath our sully text in there. So. There you have it, folks. That's how you create a furry style of effect inside of Illustrator. I start off with a simple shape um, of two circles, blended them together, and then move that blend effect onto other objects to end up with what we've got here. So the key things will be the number of blend steps you have and the number of increments you have for your roughing inside of there as well. If you enjoyed the video, folks, please give it a like to, uh, to help the channel. And again, always, you can subscribe to see future video content. And um, until next time, folks. Farewell. Well.